Want to know what separates entry-level machine learning projects from the systems powering companies like Google and Amazon? The gap might seem impossibly wide, but there's actually a pretty clear progression that most ML practitioners follow. Today I'm mapping out the five levels of machine learning projects that separate complete beginners from industry leaders. By the end of this video, you'll understand exactly where you are on this journey and what specific skills you need to reach the next level. Many aspiring machine learning engineers get stuck building the wrong types of projects that never actually land them jobs. I'll show you exactly what level of project you need for different roles, from entry-level positions to research teams at top AI companies. Let's start at the beginning. Level one is where every journey begins, working with clean, structured data sets in a Jupyter notebook, probably just on your laptop. At this level, you're downloading pre-cleaned data sets from sources like Kaggle. You'll import libraries like pandas for data manipulation, use matplotlib or seaborn or maybe even plotly for interactive visualizations, and experiment with scikit-learn to train basic models like linear regression or logistic regression. A typical project might look like this. You load a CSV into a data frame, you spend some time on exploratory data analysis with simple visualizations, you handle missing values by dropping them or filling them with means, encode categorical features using one-hot encoding, train a model with default hyperparameters, and evaluate with basic metrics like accuracy. All of this happens in notebooks where you mix code, comments, and visualizations, which is absolutely perfect for learning and getting immediate feedback. But as we all know, these little projects are a far cry from real-world machine learning applications. Your pristine Kaggle datasets rarely have the messy issues of real data, and you're not yet thinking about data leakage, sophisticated data imputation, scalability, or literally dozens of other considerations. When you start feeling limited by these boundaries, it's time to move on to level two. At level two, things get more interesting and a little more challenging. You're now working with messy Messier, more realistic data and structuring your projects like a professional data scientist rather than just messy experiments in notebooks. Your tools and workflow have evolved in the following ways. You're moving from a single notebook to a well-organized Python project with separate modules for data processing, feature engineering, model training, and evaluation. You use Git for version control, and you're creating configuration files to keep experiments reproducible. Instead of just random shuffling, you're using proper train validation test splits, often with things like walk-forward validation for time series data. You're tackling issues like class imbalance using techniques like SMOTE or adjusting class weights and applying modern feature engineering tools. You might be using more interesting models like LightGBM, simple neural networks, or even AI APIs. You're thinking about hyperparameter tuning and maybe even experimenting with more advanced options like Bayesian search. And perhaps you're making a simple pipeline with tools like Prefect. Imagine a typical level two project. This could be something like building a customer churn prediction pipeline that uses data from multiple sources like transaction records, support interactions, and usage logs, handling imbalanced classes and performing feature selection to identify the most predictive variables, and evaluating your model using precision recall curves, rock curves, and business specific metrics. This is the stage where your work becomes more structured and robust. But when your manager or a client says, okay, this is a great model, when can we use it? You quickly realize there's a whole world of production challenges waiting for you. That's when it's time for level three. Level three is the transformation from pure data science to the world of machine learning engineering, where your models have to work in production, serve real users, and drive business outcomes. At this stage, you're using a whole new ecosystem of tools and practices. You're containerizing your models using Docker to ensure consistency between deployment and production. You're creating APIs with FastAPI or Flask to serve predictions, and maybe exploring frameworks like Bento ML to simplify the process. You're setting up load testing to ensure your system can handle real traffic. Monitoring becomes crucial, so you're deploying logging and dashboards using tools like Grafana, and you start versioning your data and models using tools like DBC, MLflow, and model registries. Here's an example of a level three project, a content recommendation engine for a small media platform. Your model is packaged in a Docker container and deployed as a microservice. You offer both batch predictions to update recommendations nightly and a real-time API for on-demand predictions. You track metrics like click-through rates, latency percentiles, and monitor for feature distribution shifts. And you implement shadow deployments or circuit breakers so that if your ML service fails, the system can revert to simpler strategies. Now the complexity has obviously ramped up. You're not just focused on accuracy, but also on inference latency, throughput, and reliability. And as your system scales, you'll soon hit the challenges that lead to level four. Level four is all about building robust, scalable machine learning systems that can thrive in complex, ever-changing environments. Here you're dealing with industrial scale challenges and implementing sophisticated solutions. Your infrastructure and tooling include cloud platforms like AWS SageMaker, Google Vertex AI, or Azure ML for deployment and scaling, orchestration with Kubernetes and workflow tools like Airflow or Prefect, deep learning frameworks like PyTorch or TensorFlow for custom model development, optimization methods like quantization, knowledge distillation, and LoRa to efficiently fine-tune massive models, 
experiment tracking and hyperparameter optimization with weights and biases or MLflow, use of AI models with retrieval augmented generation, prompt tuning and in-context learning, along with things like mixture of experts models, distributed training across GPU clusters with techniques like pipeline parallelism, feature stores and automated retraining pipelines triggered by data drift, and comprehensive monitoring and A-B testing frameworks. A level four project could be developing a real-time fraud detection system for a global financial institution, utilizing advanced anomaly detection algorithms and ensemble methods to identify fraudulent activities with high recall and precision, deploying the system on a cloud platform like AWS or Azure, leveraging auto-scaling groups to handle varying loads and ensure low latency responses. You're also implementing comprehensive monitoring and alerting mechanisms to detect system anomalies, model drift, and ensure compliance with regulatory standards. At this level, you're balancing innovative research techniques with practical production constraints, creating systems that are both cutting edge and reliable. This level of sophistication naturally sets the stage for pushing into research level innovation, which is level five. Level five takes us to the cutting edge in the field, frontier machine learning systems that are actively defining the future of AI. This isn't about applying what already exists. It's about inventing brand new approaches. At this level, you're exploring things like custom neural network architectures and self-supervised learning systems that leverage vast amounts of unlabeled data, novel applications of reinforcement learning, the development of hybrid models combining symbolic reasoning with neural networks, and even designing custom hardware accelerators to optimize performance. A level five project might be building an autonomous scientific discovery system that leverages retrieval augmented generation with neurosymbolic reasoning to form and test hypotheses in molecular biology. The system uses a large language model fine-tuned on biomedical literature for hypothesis generation, employs symbolic logic modules to design plausible experiments and test causal relationships, integrates a reinforcement learning agent to simulate outcomes and optimize experiment strategies, and collaborates with human researchers by suggesting novel gene interactions and proposing using new compounds to test for open-ended tasks. These frontier projects aren't always meant for immediate production use. They're experimental, pushing the theoretical boundaries while hinting at the transformative potential of AI. So now that we know what's out there, one question I get all the time is, what level of project do I need to land a job in machine learning? The honest answer is, it depends on the role. For entry-level data science positions, show solid level two projects. Employers want to see that you can go beyond tutorial style notebooks. Your GitHub should highlight projects where you've handled messy, real world data, applied proper validation techniques, and documented your process clearly. At a minimum, you need to demonstrate proficiency with pandas, scikit-learn, and visualization libraries on a self-motivated problem that you tackled end to end. For mid-level data scientist or entry-level machine learning engineer roles, level three projects are basically table stakes. Employers expect to see that you understand how to deploy models in production environments. Projects should showcase things like containerization with Docker, API development, and monitoring systems. Experience with CI/CD and version control for both code and data is a big plus. For senior roles or any ML ops or ML platform engineer position, level four projects are critical. You need to prove that you can build and maintain complex machine learning systems at scale, utilizing cloud platforms, orchestration tools, feature stores, and automated retraining pipelines. Demonstrating how you handle distribution shifts, implement sophisticated monitoring, or design A-B testing frameworks will be required. For research-focused roles at AI-first companies, level five capabilities are expected. Publications at conferences and projects that push the boundaries of model architecture or training methodology are highly valued. One thing to keep in mind is that you don't need to hit the highest level to have a rewarding career in machine learning. The vast majority of ML jobs in the industry fall between a level three and a level four. One comprehensive level three project that solves a real problem end to end is often worth more than a dozen hastily implemented level one notebooks. So that's it, the evolution of machine learning projects from simple notebook experiments to frontier systems that push the boundaries of what's possible. Each level builds on the skills from the previous one. You don't need to jump straight to level five. Start where you're comfortable, master those skills, and move up when you're ready. I'd love to hear what level you feel like you're currently working at and what challenges you're facing. Drop a comment below, and in future videos, I'll dive deeper into the specific techniques at each level. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.